Good morning. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Friday again. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> good morning. As usual, please do pop a hello in the comments so that I know that you're there, so I can say hello. Do like to interact with people. It's like having a meetup in a cafe on a Friday morning, um, face to face ish socially distanced face to face so oh here they come <laughs> they're all waiting to come in all at once good morning sue good morning petronella good morning susie good morning alex good morning maria good morning carla good morning susan good morning senia good morning rachel good morning jess good morning leslie lots and lots of people Good morning to you all. Good morning, Jay. Good morning, Christine. Xenia's having tea. Yep, I've got tea as well, Xenia. Um, saying good morning to Pete and Eric. I'm actually upstairs in the witch's parlour today, so Pete and Eric are downstairs, but they are there. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Tess. Love your green and purple velvet curtains. Thank you very much. Um, up here in the new witchy parlour. Just kind of getting it sorted now. Good morning, Willow. Cold, windy day there. Um, it's grey here today. You've kind of got the smell of spring in the air, but it is grey. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Jane. You look like you've lost weight. Thank you very much, Jane. I have lost uh, a couple of stone. Uh, husband and I have been on a healthy eating kick since... September. He's lost three stone and I've lost two stone. Um, we're eating far too much cake. <laughs> so thank you for noticing. <laughs> but he's all right. <laughs> uh, good morning, Karen. Need to get on my diet properly. Uh, we followed Weight Watchers. We, we needed a bit of a boost. Um, I'm nearly there. Got about half a stone to go, um, but yeah, it's it's given us a different outlook on eating actually, and we've still had treats. We've still had cake, so um, all good, all good. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, Christine. Is this a good topic for me today? Just ate three triple chocolate cookies. I ate three chocolate profiteroles yesterday, Christine. So um, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Good morning, Kerry. Good morning, Teresa. Lots of lovely people. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Eva. Good morning, Carol. Give it a minute or two for you to all find find your faces. No, that's not right, is it? <laughs> um, to settle in. And then we'll start. Interesting one today, hopefully. Carol's just doing the school run. Oh, I'm lucky. Um, only one left at home now that's at school and he walks himself, so it's all good. Eva, only three, I can't stop eating them. Uh, it's, yeah, it's sort of watching what you eat and following a, a proper schedule of eating and working out how many points everything is has actually given me a different perspective. So I only eat it if I really, really want it now, which is good. Uh, good morning, Kay. Jane, you put me to shame. Lost just over a stone since October and now stuck. Yeah, I must admit, I've been stuck since Christmas because uh, I still can't stop knitting. <laughs> I'm not going for walks and bike rides. I think you might have an addiction there, Jane. <laughs> I think you may have an addiction. Yes, actually, I have been a bit stuck since Christmas because I do like my food, but we're getting there, getting there. Good morning, Elizabeth. Sue says, lashing down with rain in Somerset. We did have rain yesterday. We'll all in a minute. Debbie's on Weight Watchers and have lost two stone. Go, Debbie. Good morning, Erin. Yeah, I think, funny enough, it's food I'm going to be talking about today and eating. Following on from our chat last week, uh, where we talked about what a witch is, what a pagan is, labels, definitions. Um, a question that comes up occasionally, and I have been asked it on more than one occasion, is all about food and pagans or witches specifically. 
Uh, do you need to be vegetarian to be a witch? And I have seriously been asked that question a couple of times. So um, that's kind of the basis for the talk today. Good morning, Paul. Waves to Japan. <laughs> Paul, my lovely blanket has made its way up into my new witch's parlour. It makes me smile every time I see it. <laughs> Jane's going to belong to Sock Knitters Anonymous. <laughs> Uh, hi, Summer. Summer is a vegan witch. Cool. Uh, good morning, Trudy. Yes, so I wanted to talk about um, food and as pagans see food. And it is seriously, I have been asked the question, oh, you know, I can't be a witch because I'm not vegetarian. Or Seriously, you don't need to be vegetarian to be a witch. You really don't. You don't need to be vegetarian to be a pagan. Um, what you eat is your own personal choice. It has to be. Uh, good morning, Laura. Christine's veggie too, yep. Um, we've all got our um, different beliefs, different reasons for eating what we eat, um, for making that decision. Uh, Elizabeth, also vegan witch, but that's nothing to do with being witch. Yeah, it is. Uh, what you eat and how you eat is a personal choice. I don't believe it has anything to do with being a witch or being a pagan, although I am going to talk about pagan cooking, what makes it pagan cooking, and perhaps the different, slightly different view that pagans um, have on food, really. So that's what we're talking about today. As always, good morning, Melody. Um, pop your comments in the comment boxes and uh, we'll have a bit of a discussion about it. Hopefully it'll be as good as last week's. Last week's was fascinating. Not, <laughs> not praising myself. It was fascinating because you guys, <laughs> because you guys joined in and it made it a really interesting discussion. So, uh, yes, interesting. No, you don't need to be a vegetarian to be a witch or a pagan. The other interesting thing is um, I've been writing articles for magazines and blogs for eight or nine years now. And I'm very blessed to write for some fantastic magazines and some fantastic blogs. Uh, and all that time, I've never had any complaints. Not that I know of anyway. Um but I, one, a complaint came in last week. Hi, Jackie. A complaint came in recently about an article that I'd written about in bulk. And the complaint was from a vegan who said that it was absolutely disgusting and horrific that I had written about in bulk being a festival of milk and butter and eggs, um, which they probably needed to work a little bit on there history of in bulk because it's kind of what it's all about um, but how horrified they were that uh, as a Wiccan I didn't follow the Wiccan read which is harm none which means that I can't eat animals so let's kind of cover that first shall we <laughs> uh, good morning Dawn uh, well I'm not Wiccan for a start uh, but I also don't believe that the Wiccan read means that literally there are lots of other um there's a better ways of interpreting different ways of interpreting it um it doesn't mean exactly that i don't believe uh but in bulk is a festival of milk it's a festival of um animals baby animals um Maria says you're not Wiccan. No, I'm not Wiccan at all. I, and that's not knocking Wiccans. My initial training was in Wicca. It's a fantastic pathway to follow. Um, Jane, it's time fate and fortune put up a more up-to-date picture of you. You actually look younger now than you do in their pic. Oh, Jane, I love you. <laughs> and your socks. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I did ask fate and fortune recently to put up a new picture, but it costs quite a lot of money to get them to all, you know, do the artwork and stuff so it didn't happen um 
uh, hi, Summer says, I just have dairy alternatives when I celebrate in bulk. Yes, it is, it's, it's straightforward, isn't it? It's, I think this person had to be in their bonnet about something and, you know, it just wanted to shout off about something. Uh, Jackie says, I feel that sometimes people can read too much into it. It's like reading the Bible and following it to the letter. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? I think um, they had missed the point completely. Um, I have in the last couple of years started including vegan recipes whenever I write an article. I ha And I'm let me start by saying that just because I'm not vegan or vegetarian doesn't mean that I disprove it. I really don't. It is your life choice and I wholeheartedly take my hat off to you if you can make that kind of dedication. I have a best friend who's vegan. I have several other members of our coven that are vegan and it has opened up a whole other doorway of baking specifically for me because we have um, open rituals where I bake cakes and cookies. I started looking at vegan recipes so that everyone could share when we feasted during the ritual and actually I've been absolutely blown away with the vegan baking recipes there's been some amazing recipes that I've tried that you'd never know were vegan at all and actually ones that I still keep making even though my immediate family aren't vegan because the recipes were good uh, and I want to be inclusive when we have our rituals so it just sort of makes sense uh, but yeah, I, I, it's a difficult decision to make. And I think as pagans, we kind of look at things differently. So we will cover some of that. But let's, let's all Christine says, in my house, I have a male who eats meat and fish, but I make my own veggie foods. I don't mind cooking for him and don't object to him eating meat as it's a personal choice. Yeah, absolutely, Christine. Absolutely. Good morning, Belladonna. Um, Diane, I don't think that to be a witch, we are bound to the read. It's interesting. The Wiccan Wick, Wick read is a whole other conversation, and we, we'll cover that because one on a separate issue because it is an interesting thing to jump into. Uh, Jackie says, we're not vegan, but my mother-in-law is, yet we enjoy meat-free days during the week. Yes, we have. We quite often have meat-free days. Uh, it is, you know, it's not a huge, huge importance, but it is – something to be mindful of and I will cover that as well. Karen says some people moan for moaning's sake and this has been a very noticeable during the last year it has Karen hasn't it that that I think everyone's fed up aren't they and understandably so um, but yes there does seem to be a little bit of um all right there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot of niggling out there isn't it um <laughs> Jane, step away from the alpacas and the socks. <laughs> uh, we have to stop Jane talking about socks. <laughs> oh, I love that you knit socks. I can't knit to save my life. So, Carla says, I think there's so much negativity around veganism now that people don't realise just how many day-to-day -day things are actually vegan anyway. Yes, you've hit the nail on the head, Carla, haven't you? Uh, yeah, bread vegan chips vegan you know all the veggie stuff we eat vegan yeah it's interesting yes elizabeth says beans on toast yep uh rachel says i gave up eating meat at age 12 so that's nearly 40 years ago you do not look that old rachel i don't believe you um for the reason i just didn't like it simple as that it's a personal choice and each to their own uh absolutely it is it is and i think it is it has to be and i I've never put up with bullies anywhere. So I'm not going to be bullied about the choices that I make for the food that I eat. But there is a whole other side to it. Just because I'm not vegan doesn't mean that I don't respect others' choices to be vegan. Yeah. No, my best friend is vegan. I'm not going <laughs> to. I don't have a problem at all. And in actual fact, it makes life difficult sometimes it really does in our little group when we go out to our cafes we have one person who's vegan and one person who's gluten-free it makes it actually very difficult to find cafes that will cater for everybody but we do we manage and we've had some amazing cakes lunches all sorts um, and we have found some amazing places that do cater for all of us 
but it has to be a personal choice and I'm not going to be bullied by anyone into telling me that I have to do this and I have to do that about anything. <laughs> so the question is, um, <laughs> so you're naughty. Sue says, nothing like a bowl of vegan chips cooked in beef dripping. <laughs> Sue, you're very naughty. <laughs> very naughty. Um, but the interesting thing is, uh, a while back, uh, I was asked by John Hunt, who owns John Hunt Publishing, who is the owner of Moon Books, the company that published most of my books. He asked why I hadn't done a cookbook. So from there sprung the Practically Pagan range or series that Moon Books run. And they asked me to do Practically Pagan Cooking. The first question I had to actually ask myself was, what is pagan cooking? What do you see pagan cooking as? How do you kind of define it? So that was the first hurdle, which I'm going to talk about. Uh, Xenia says, also, some people just avoid some foods. Yes, meat, milk, fruits, because of health and food intoler intolerances. Yes, now I actually, I was vegetarian for a while as, as a teenager, but in a household that all ate meat, it was, and I wasn't in charge of the cooking, it was quite difficult. Um, <laughs> I have tried being vegan for a while because uh, it was one of the things I tried to help with my perimenopause symptoms. Unfortunately, I also have a bowel disease. I have ulcerative colitis and it did not agree with a solely plant-based diet. It was very, very unhappy. So if I was to go vegan, I would have to do some serious major shifting of stuff uh, and working out different foods because my body didn't like it. But there you go. Each to their own. It, uh, it has to be a personal choice. And I think particularly with vegans, uh, I think Jane said, yes, vegan is a major commitment, making sure you're getting whole bundles of amino acids, etc. not something to be taken lightly. Absolutely. I think there is a eating a variety of food gives you all of the balance. If you cut out one of the major food groups, then you need to replace it with something. And it's not as easy as it seems. Carla says, oh, Carla, yes. Surely as pagans, we should be more tolerant of each other's beliefs and practices as a whole, shouldn't we? We really should. Unfortunately, we're not. Trudy says, we're in a world where we have choices in the food aspect, but pagans and Celts, our ancestors in general, had no choice to survive. It was harsh times. Yes, you know, ancient man had to eat whatever he could find. <laughs> there weren't choices. There were not choices. Um, right. That's, I've got a different laptop today, but it's getting used to not having a mouse. So bear with me a sec. Ping, ping, ping. Uh, Christine, I went to a restaurant and I told them I was veggie and got a bowl of chips and a bowl of peas. <laughs> yeah, I guess it was horrified to see how I had my meal served. Uh, yes, I think if, uh, the uh, restaurants need to kind of... Um, think about it a little bit more, don't they? Some of them, not all of them, because there are some really, really good ones out there. They, yeah, it takes a little bit of thinking about, doesn't it? I mean, you're not going to walk into a steakhouse and expect them to serve you a fantastic vegan meal, because that ain't going to happen. But the same as I wouldn't walk into a vegan restaurant and, and expect to be served a steak. It, it works both ways. <laughs> Uh, Jane, if you wrote a cookbook, it would be practically 99% cakes. I have written a cookbook, Jane. <laughs> practically Pagan Cooking is out there. Uh, and it has different recipes for uh, all the 12 months of the year. And it does, it does have, <laughs> it does have things other than cakes. It's quite cake heavy, but it does have other things. Willow says, Pagan Cooking, don't witches eat babies. Mm, delicious. <laughs> Jelly babies, obviously. Maria says they're too chewy. Yeah, Elizabeth, they do get stuck in your teeth. Yeah, Diane on high days and holidays. Oh, yeah, if you're going to have a celebration. <laughs> uh, hi, Bettina. Bettina says I'm vegan, but there's a magical aspect here. My kids grow up as vegan, but they are cut off from their land and traditional foods and traditions. It's something I do a lot of thinking on, and I will try and find a way to link them back with it. Also, I do so much energy work and cannot exclude that some personal support might circle back to me in some shape or form. Doesn't change my view or attitude towards veganism and healthy nourishment. You have to do what's right for you. Uh, 
Um, and it has to be, I think part of it is being mindful about where food comes from as well and teaching your children where food comes from. There's an awful lot of children these days that have no idea where the food comes from. They think it just comes in a packet from the supermarket. So that's about parents teaching as well. Um, that's our responsibility as, as parents. Sue has diverticulitis. I can't say that word. Divi diverticulitis. <laughs> uh, yeah, vegan, the veg would run faster than that. Yeah, Sue, with, with um, difficulties like that, and I hear you with my bowel disease, yeah, vegan doesn't really work with their digestive systems. Yeah, Karen's the same. You, you know, it has to it has to work for you. Uh, Petronella, my body was totally on the fritz after two years of vegetarianism. Turned out I'm allergic to tomato, soy, and a lot of other things. That's it, isn't it? There are a lot of allergies that have to that come into play when we make choices like this. Um, oh, we've got our first first um, spam user. Just going to block him. There we go. I have one of those four. That's exciting. Uh, Leslie, tried a vegetarian diet and the plant-based foods did not agree with me. was left with awful, painful bloating. It is about working out what works for you. Xenia, eat local. I only eat local children. We are going to get onto that. I am going to get onto that. <laughs> I am going to get onto the talk in a minute, I promise. Uh, Carol, need to start doing some gluten-free, but don't know where to start if anyone has any ideas. Found out in November I have polycystic ovaries, so gluten-free is meant to be good. I do have some gluten-free recipes on my blog, Carol. Um, just getting rid of the, the troll. Right. Uh, oh, thank you. There's a link there for my book. Uh, Summer's Daughter's Vegan too. That's quite a big decision for a nine-year-old. Um Maria can't become vegan for similar reasons. I think it has to be a choice, doesn't it? It has to be a personal choice. But let's have a think about pagan cooking. Um, I do want to reiterate that I'm not knocking any of your choices. You know, I think to make a commitment like that is a huge commitment, and I take my hat off to you. But let's look at pagan cooking. So obviously I've got a bit of a reputation for cake, <laughs> and I do love baking. I do love it. I find it very, very therapeutic, actually. Uh, and I have written for different Sabbaths and different intents and all sorts of articles. And in my books, most of my books have got recipes of one kind or another. And as I say, I have more recently started to make sure that I have included vegetarian and vegan recipes and gluten free ones. My Practically Pagan Cooking book has vegetarian, vegan and gluten free recipes in it as well. So I am trying to cover as many bases as possible. Uh, but is it pagan cooking? What's pagan cooking? Is it just cooking for the Sabbaths? Is it just cooking for different intents? Wouldn't that make it quite restrictive? What does it cover? Uh, I think it covers a lot, actually. It does cover cooking specific foods for the Sabbaths and the celebrations. Um, but I also think it does cover cooking with the intent. We can add magic to our cooking. We can cook things specifically for love, prosperity, that kind of thing. Also creating foods to honour deities. I've quite often done that if I've been working with a particular deity. I've made uh, something that has involved spices or herbs that I relate to that particular god or goddess. Baking bread and cookies to eat within ritual done that quite a lot. We always have cake and cookies at our rituals. <laughs> Food prepared to serve at workshops. Every kitchen witch workshop comes complete with cake and cookies. Dishes created uh, in harmony with the moon phase. You can cook specific dishes to connect with the energy of a particular moon phase. Working with seasonal ingredients, which is really, really important to me. Also being mindful of where your ingredients are sort, sourced from and where they come from. So I could probably go on to include pretty much everything that you do cooking food for your family, because you always cook with love, she says, hopefully, when you cook for your family. Uh, I always recognize the magic in the ingredients when I use ingredients. Uh, and I always 
use seasonal ingredients as well and I'm mindful where they all came from so for me I think that all encompasses pagan cooking specifically for me seasonal and mindful really kind of encompasses the pagan cooking idea for me uh, I, it's going to be different for every person i guess but for me that's kind of what covers pagan cooking christine loved my book on magical food thank you uh, Jane finding out I'm diabetic a few months ago made me cut right down on carbs and especially refined stuff and I've noticed my IBS has gone into remission it's interesting isn't it I have found with my ulcerative colitis if I make bread or pastry or cakes from scratch myself much better bought bread that's made in the supermarket no good and I think a lot of it is not actually the gluten in it I think it is the chemicals they add to it uh, hi, Eric. I am 50 now. I am now 50 at age of I couldn't eat meat. It was the thought of eating something that lived. Been vegetarian for 45 years. At age 25, I went vegan. Feel so healthy. If it works for you, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Willow says wild herbal medicines added into everyday food. Yep. Um, Erin, I had to adapt to a lectin-free diet to help with food allergies and several chronic illnesses, which meant changing the veggies and carbs I was eating and how I eat them. The impact was amazing. It has got to suit your body. It really has. Uh, Jane says, I believe any food made with love and intent to share with family and friends is totally magical and appropriate to a pagan life. Absolutely, Jane. Um, willow nettles great for protection on your window ledges add them to stew for a peppery taste oh there's so many things we could get into all of the herbs couldn't we <laughs> they're all brilliant for everything all brilliant for absolutely everything leslie says to me pagan cooking means cooking seasonally yes absolutely i eat only what the season offers from local producers um good morning eve yes leslie now you've hit that that for me is one of the key things uh, it is seasonal I think we've lost it I think we've lost that seasonal thing from food suppliers tea's cold now <laughs> I think being able to purchase strawberries in December is just ridiculous because they're not seasonal and they take don't taste of anything um I can hear Eric in the background I think that's the door <laughs> <laughs> um it's convenient to be able to buy fruit and veggies anytime throughout the year but they're not going to taste how they should taste and they're going to be so expensive when they're out of season as well uh not to even go into the cost of airfare to ship them here from other parts of the world wherever you might be so i think seasonality is really really key for me um I think it's really important. I think it also helps us connect with Mother Earth and with the turning of the wheel and to, to have that direct connection to nature. If you're eating seasonally, it's cheaper, it tastes better, and it's far more eco-friendly. We don't actually have a green grocer near me, uh, not within walking distance anyway. So I have had for, and it's probably about 20 odd years now, I've had Riverford vegetable boxes delivered each week and I never know what I'm going to get. And it's always a surprise. And there have been some vegetables that I had to learn what to do with them. <laughs> um, oh, wild garlic. We had wild garlic delivered yesterday, which is absolutely fantastic. But it's all grown locally and it's all... Um, I'm supporting local companies. In the beginning of the first lockdown last year, I also sourced a meat supplier, a lovely farm down in Devon, that it's all farm assured, the animals are all well cared for. It's all based in Devon, helping out local suppliers again, and they ship it straight to me. So that's all cool as well. And I actually, I found lots of things like that. I've stopped using olive oil because it's not made in England. I use rapeseed oil now, which is grown locally and produced locally. So for me, eating seasonally is a real, real big key thing from the taste, from the cost and from the connection to the seasons and to Mother Nature. 
uh, I think that is a really big for me. That's a real key thing. Uh, Jane says, oh boy, do they add chemicals to bread. It lasts for weeks and even mold is scared to sell on it. It does. It is really frightening, isn't it? Uh, good morning, Kay. Using all sorts of body products, not food. That has toxic ingredient and affects my body too. Yeah. Uh, yes, there's lots of chemicals in food. Not so good. Not so good. Uh, Christine, stirring our food, diacil or widdershins makes cooking more interesting. Oh, there's so much stuff you can do in the kitchen. Stirring clockwise to bring in positive energy, stirring anti-clockwise to get rid of negative energy, peeling potatoes and visualising all the negative energy falling off as the peel falls off, washing carrots and visualising negative energy disappearing down the plug hole as you're washing them. So many things that you can bring into your kitchen magic. Absolutely. Uh, Sue, usually those Spanish strawberries are bland and tasteless. Yes, I noticed uh, yesterday that the strawberries in the shop, well, my husband bought a packet of strawberries for me. Um, they came from Morocco. I can't even begin to imagine the amount of money that it must have cost to ship them over here and the amount of damage that it did. I'm training him. It's not quite there yet. <laughs> He did it as a nice surprise for me. Uh, Summer says, a celebration of the season's bounty. Absolutely. Uh, Thursdays, I get these couple of big boxes of fruit and veg from Riverford, and it's all fresh. It was literally picked the day before and all grown locally. Just amazing. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, as a kid, my dad had an allotment, and I can remember summers of my mum trying to find different ways to use courgettes or zucchini for you guys in America because they were so abundant. <laughs> you do kind of, there are periods when we've just started in the broad bean season. Um, there are only so many things you can do with broad beans as well. And you do kind of at the end of the season, you think, what else am I going to do with them? <laughs> but it is, it's a way of connecting. Erin uh, says, had to change my makeup to vegan formula so I didn't ingest milk through my skin. Never thought that was a thing, but it made a big difference. Oh, no, I'd not thought of that either, actually. Interesting. Christine, if I am what I eat, I'm cabbage. It's my favourite. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't mind a bit of cabbage. Don't mind a bit of carrot. Cabbage. Um, sorry, the little, I'm trying to get used to this mouse thing. Xenia says tomatoes. Prefer the small ones as they're really tasty. The big ones from the glass house seems like they're empty, filled with water. Now, this is a big thing. My husband eats lots of tomatoes and he complains quite often that they don't taste of anything. And I have to point out that they aren't in season, so they're not going to taste of anything. Um, Vanessa, allotmenteering is the answer for me. <laughs> Excellent. Savoy cabbage, the summer. Yep, nice. Uh, we're eating spring greens at the moment, which are lovely. Tess says, totally lost seasonal foods. Also having hot cross buns in December. Yeah, it's just wrong. <laughs> it is wrong, isn't it? Uh, hot cross buns aren't just for Easter, you know. They are a pagan thing too. Think about the cross being the four elements or the Celtic cross. Sorry, just a random thing. Kay says, eating local food is recommended in the diet because what the local food has is right for your body, for your area and for that season. I do. It's seasonal is so important. And also you are supporting your local suppliers as well, which I think is really important as well. Good morning, Pia. Um, Teresa says it's quite worrying how things are processed. Yes, it really is, isn't it? Um, Sue says Morrison's has a box of wonky veg. That's the other thing, isn't it? I can remember years and years ago now being on holiday in Tenerife and touring a banana plantation. And they couldn't sell their bananas to England because they were too bendy. <laughs> because apparently they weren't straight enough. How mad is that? But yes, if you do look in some of the supermarkets now, I think Morrison's are the first one to do it, aren't they? They will sell you really cheap veg because it's odd shaped. Yeah, it tastes of vegetables doesn't matter what shape it is um jane says i can't believe sellers still don't have to own up to things being irradiated see the word irradiated just makes me think of red dwarf and irradiated haggis and if you've not watched red dwarf you'll have no idea what i'm talking about <laughs> um 
Uh, Pia says, I love it that subtitles are there. Oh, I didn't know they were. <laughs> I have no idea how they get there, Pia. No idea at all. Um, Jane says, cabbage water is the best for starting off gravy. Yes, don't tip away your veggie water. That's really good for stock, for soups as well. Um, but I think, yes, seasonality has to be a key for me. But I think going back to the meat eating subject, I think it has to be about mindful. Uh, I do. Carla says, I agree with keeping things seasonal and local as you can, but I have to sort the same things all year round because of my son's autism. Yeah, I mean, there are always going to be um, individual things, aren't there? But, you know, if we all do our own bit, no matter how small, then absolutely. Uh, Tess says Morrison's is awful for having foods from abroad and even Tesco most of the veggies from abroad I shop in Aldi and most of their fruit and veggies produced in the UK yes I, I do I believe uh, Lidl's is much the same isn't it I think uh, but I, I don't I, I haven't been in a supermarket for over a year now uh, we have a supermarket delivery every so often for the bits and pieces tinned things everything else I get from um, Riverford Veg Box and that includes bread. They do bread as well and milk. And I also order from the milkman. So the milkman delivers milk, obviously. He also delivers soy milk and butter and cheese and bread. Uh, and he delivers vegetable boxes as well. So if you haven't got a veg box scheme in your area, do check out your milkman because they deliver all sorts of things as well uh, and from local suppliers. Um, Kay says my parents were greengrocers and have totally irradiated any <laughs> you can make me say that word again any nonsense about food perfection in shapes and colour but show me to value food do you know and I think it is <laughs> Christine smoke me a kip or I'll be back for breakfast yes big head <laughs> um, it is bizarre isn't it and I think a lot of that comes from your parents as well and it's about waste as well, isn't it? The amount of food that we waste every year is phenomenal. It's totally unbelievable. When I was a kid, I mean, Dad had an allotment anyway, but when I was a kid, you had a roast dinner on a Sunday. Then you had cold meat and baked potatoes on a Monday. And then my mum would make rissoles out of the leftover baked potatoes and the leftover scraps of meat on a Tuesday. So that one joint of meat lasted at least three meals. Nothing ever got thrown away and I tried to do that myself as well we had um we had some potato and spring greens a couple of days ago with I can't even remember what we were eating now but wherever the meal was it's not bad. chicken we had chicken <laughs> and there was potato and spring greens left so yesterday we had a uh, bubble and squeak one of my favorites potato and spring greens all fried up absolutely lovely um <laughs> sue put cheese on your shopping list jane says our milkman delivered compost yes my milkman delivered compost and some bedding plants in the summer when we were totally on lockdown uh diane i feel a sense of personal failure if we have any food waste to put in our weekly rubbish collection i have because our veg box living on thursday wednesday tends to be anything that's left soup <laughs> So if there's a few odd veggies left in the fridge, they all get thrown in the soup. Um, but it is about using up things and not being that wasteful. But as regards to meat, yes, I do eat meat. And I have experienced the whole meat scenario from the other side. In my late teens, early 20s, I lived on a pig farm. We also had a sister dairy farm. So I have experienced the other side of it where you are raising animals to feed people. So I've seen that side of it, and I am very conscious of that side of it. I do eat meat. We don't eat meat every day necessarily, but I am very, very mindful of where that meat is sourced from. Uh, in an ideal world, I would love to get my meat from a you know local organic supplier, but we've also got to be mindful of budget because organic meat is much more expensive however say i have found this place down in devon um that do the meat box company i'll give them a shout out because they are brilliant and we've had all sorts of lovely stuff from there and it's 
really really inexpensive it all comes frozen you chuck it in the freezer and it's all from local farms to them we're supporting local suppliers and it's all they're all well cared for um so i'm absolutely no issues with that at all i won't buy supermarket meat um and i eggs eggs is a big one for me as well i never ever buy anything that's not free range eggs uh, but my eggs come from riverford or the milkman anyway and they're all free range um, so I think it is, supermarkets are convenient, uh, and they do sell cheaper items, but you can also be mindful, but there's a knock on effect. If the big supermarkets sell meat or produce at a cheap price, then they're forcing the suppliers and the farmers down in price, which puts a lot of strain on the farm to produce quantity at stupidly cheap prices. So I think the actual issue is with the supermarkets. I think they're one of the key problems. They're forcing the farmers down in price, which makes it, you know, difficult for them to work within the constraints of, of being uh, better living for the animals. Uh, some are hate food waste. Yep, no, it, it's uh, Lidl's case says Lidl's are selling a compost box this week. Nice. Jane says nothing gets wasted in our gaff. We give bones and stuff to the foxes so they don't have to rip our bin bag and everything that doesn't go down our necks feeds the birds or the compost diggies. Yep, it is mindful, isn't it? It's just about thinking a bit about what um, you're doing with it all. Kay says there was a cook, Shirley something, used to show you how to use leftovers, take potato peelings and make crisps with them. Well, I don't have potato peelings. Even if I make mashed potato, I just wash the potatoes and I mash them with the skins on, mainly because I'm quite lazy. <laughs> I love baking, don't like cooking quite so much. <laughs> so anything that's a shortcut for me. Um, and if you're buying veggies that are organic from the veg box, from local suppliers, most of them don't need peeling anyway, just a quick wash and they're fine. Um Yep, some are veg scraps to take to local peas and the birdies as well. Eric says, veganism should never be forced on anyone. It's a choice. My children decided in their teens to join my wife and I. It should be a choice. Near. It has to be a choice. I don't think anything that you're forced into doing, whether it is veganism, vegetarianism, going on a diet, anything that you're made to do, you're not going to be so committed to and not going to stick to it. It has to be your own choice, definitely. Uh, Diane says, we're lucky for eggs around here. Lots of folks keep chickens and sell the excess at their garden gate. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, Jane says, Jack Monroe always buys free range eggs. Even when she was at rock bottom, she wouldn't compromise. No, I won't compromise either. Absolutely not. Um, Xenia says, in our supermarket, they have organic eggs where it's said that the male chickens aren't killed. I only buy them. Cool. Uh, Diane says, yep, lots of chick pe folks keep chickens in the garden, sell them at the gate. Yes, there is. Um... Oh, I'm getting doubles. I'm getting double comments there just to confuse me. But yes, I think meat have. If you're going to eat meat, then you need to make the decision to be mindful. I don't need to, but I suggest you make the decision to be mindful of where it's sourced from. Uh, farmers markets are excellent for meat and veggies and all sorts of things. If you go to the farmers market, you can find all sorts of things: local hun local honey and jams and chutneys and bread and all sorts of things. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, just don't be don't be bullied into any decision about whether you eat it or not. And as a witch, I honour the animal in all forms. So when I cook meat to eat, nothing's wasted. I think to cook meat and then waste it would be horrendous. Uh, if it's a chicken, you can cook, cook and eat the chicken, use the bones to boil up for stock, and then you've got chicken bones to work with in magic, whether you use them for divination sets or whether you grind them up and use them in magic or um, spell pouches or all sorts of things. Make sure that you use all of it. And then you've honoured the animal. It is about thinking right the way through it for me. Um, I've got a drum. A lot of pagans have got drums made from animal skins. 
I was very blessed to be able to make the drum myself from scratch. It was a very long day and it was very messy, but it was an amazing experience. But the skin came from a uh, stag from Scotland uh, and it was a managed herd. And I think that's important to think about as well. There is, there's a cycle of life. There's, there's a food pyramid basically. Uh, and a lot of things like deer herds can grow too big for the area they're in and then the land can't support them. So they do manage the herds for that reason, to keep the herd strong and healthy. They do take out the older stags. It has to be done, otherwise the land gets too small for the size of the herd. But there is a whole pyramid of feeding if you think about it, even things like, and I don't, advocate hunting for sport um, but there is there has to be a management of sorts as in deer herds that kind of thing and if you are running something like a chicken farm you do have to keep out the foxes I have seen the devastation that one fox can cause in a chicken run they kill all of them just they go into a wild frenzy and kill the whole lot and run off with one to eat. Um, so, yeah, there there is that side of it because that's how nature works. Uh, most animals like that eat meat and there's a whole chain and it all goes down the chain. Uh, your cat, if you have a pet cat, they have to eat meat. They can't survive on eating vegetables only. So there has to be that kind of... There is that kind of nature doing its thing, scale of things. So I think if you're going to eat meat, you have to be conscious of where it comes from and how it's sourced. Not eating meat isn't may not be the right answer for all. There's knock-on effects for every single decision that you make. Um, there are consequences to all of our actions. So I think it's about being mindful that each person has to make their own choices. Uh, Summer says eggshells are fab for compost. They stop slugs on plants and, of course, spell work. Yes, I do keep crushed shells for magical working. Um, oh, Jane says don't crush the eggshells in the compost. Worms love to huddle in them like little igloos. Worm igloos. Love it. <laughs> uh, Kay says found her. Shirley Good, The Good Kitchen, really old book, and she used to be on TV. I don't remember that. I don't know her at all. Well, look her up, Kay. Thank you. Jane says, I put all our bones and carcasses in the freezer as long as they've not come off our plates and then make stock. Yep, absolutely good for stock, soup, gravies, all sorts. Yeah. Kay says, the food pyramids have changed recently to recommend eating more fresh food and less meat, less breads and pasta, etc. Um, It has to work for you, doesn't it? It does have to work for you. It's Each person is going to be slightly um, different. Giselle, late to the party, I'm trying to go vegan. Does anyone recommend a good book or Facebook group? Um, not, I, I'm sure someone else will be able to, Giselle, but as a meat eater, that's not, not my area, I'm afraid. Oh, yes, Summer, Bosch. Yes, Bosch is quite a good book. I did buy that book because I've got a friend who's vegan. Bosch is quite a good book. But you will find there are a lot of different ingredients that you will need to go out and source from health food shops. Uh, John, hi, John. Uh, my morning granddad's duties are done oh <laughs> knowing a bit about climate change and the drivers of it veganism won't save the planet on its own no it won't i have a saying if it's not organic you won't save humans on this planet the production of toxic wakes farming chemicals produces masses of methane leakage a far quicker working greenhouse gas i think it's a huge problem and i don't think it is one that is easily solved I think the whole planet suddenly deciding to go vegan would cause chaos and the planet wouldn't be able to produce enough food to feed everyone. So I think it is a huge, huge problem um, that needs, I don't know, I don't think anyone has the answer. But I think if we all do it our own little bit and part of that is not buying things that are out of season so that the planes don't have to fill the air with all of their fuel chemicals just to ship as strawberries in December. 
uh, I think it is. I think for me, shopping locally and shop, shopping seasonally is a big, big key for that. And let's face it, if if everyone did go vegan tomorrow, and again, not knocking it at all, what would happen to all the animals? What would happen to the pigs and the cows and the sheep? Is uh, they would be wiped out because no one would have. They wouldn't be worth keeping them. Uh, so we would lose a whole chunk of the animal population and everything has its place. Everything fits into the whole scale of things. So I think it is a huge problem. Um, you know, climate change is a big problem and I'm not sure there is a direct answer, but if we can all do our own little bit for it, um, every little bit helps. I mean, I've, I'm slowly but surely eliminating plastic from my house in the form of washing up sponges and soap dish, you know, pump soaps and shower gel. It's all going slowly, but surely. Um, we've all got to do our own little bit, but it has to be your own choice. Uh, Kay says, what's the new saying? The longer the sell by date on the food, the quicker it could kill you. <laughs> yes. Well, the longer the sell by date on the food, the more chemicals it must have in it. Um, so I think there are some keys for me. I think pagan cooking, pagan eating is about being seasonal and it's about being mindful whether you eat meat or not. It has to be mindful. Uh, it is about seasonal. It is about where you source it from. And I absolutely understand about convenience. Having fed a family of five for some considerable time on a budget, you do have to be realistic. Uh, and feeding teenagers especially <laughs> can be incredibly expensive. So I have, you know, I often use frozen veg and tinned fruit. You know, the food police aren't going to bash down my door because of it. <laughs> um, but it is about being sensible with it. You have to work within your budget. And there are some things. I'm not going to buy fresh peas and shell them all because really that's not going to happen. <laughs> Um, sweet potato, butternut squash, all things like that. They all, you know, handy to have in the freezer for making soups and things. I won't ever buy frozen Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts, but I won't buy the frozen ones because they're just mushy and yucky. But frozen fruit is really good. Bags of frozen fruit is useful to have in the freezer. So if it makes life easier for you, then go for it. And if it's within your budget, you've got to work within that as well. Um, and of course, there is foraging if you're into that. It is wild garlic season. If you can find a damp area of woodland near you, look out for wild garlic. Please don't confuse it with lily of the valley because that's poisonous. <laughs> but Mother Nature does provide a whole load of um, wild plants. Just make sure you do identify them. But again, for me, and it is thinking about it, it is about being mindful Um that's interesting. Yes, Jane says it's good to see terracotta flower back. Flower pots have made a serious comeback. It's a shame so many plants are still sold in plastic. That's a big, big eco problem. Don't chuck out all your plastic pots. Just keep reusing the ones you've got, and then you are actually making practical use of them and not adding to the plastic heap. There are a lot of terracotta pots now that are far more affordable but I have noticed in the garden centers now there's a company that does hairy pots I don't know if you've seen those they are uh looks like coconut co coir matting stuff um so there's no plastic pot they're just in this fiber pot and you just plant it straight in the ground uh, which is brilliant uh Christine says I cringe when I see the words sugar-free and fat-free it, yes, because that reads chemicals. Yeah, it really does. Uh, unfortunately, if you are diabetic, uh, you do have to be mindful of um, sugar in things. But yes, I if it says sugar-free or fat-free, it means there's going to be a lot of chemicals in it. Uh, Jackie says, my husband is a chef and he buys the fresh sprouts when in season then blanches them. Yes, that's a good way of dealing with it. They don't last that long in our house. We just eat them all. <laughs> Karen says, Brussels sprouts roasted in chutney with carrots and parsnips. Yum. Uh, Kay says, I think also when the virus came and the first lockdown caused panic, people suddenly started using dried foods to reconstitute with water. So that actually is a good outcome, I think. We were having to rethink. 
Yes, I mean, I say I've had a veg box delivered for over 20 years now. But the first lockdown did cause me to think a bit outside the box. And that's when I discovered the meat delivery people that I now still use all the time. And the oilseed rape people, because um, I use that all the time now as well. And I just signed up for the milkman just before the first lockdown started. So he's been a lifesaver as well. So, yes, it has made me think outside the box and sort of going further on the eco bit. As I say, shower gel, soap pumps, washing sponges. I've got rid of all of those now. We have normal bars of soap for showering, for washing your hands all from Bewitched Botanicals because they're absolutely brilliant. Uh, they are now also doing a hand sanitizer spray, spray, the Plague Doctor, which is brilliant. I've got rid of all the, or oh, stopped buying the plastic spongy scarra things for washing up. I have uh, reusable ones that you just chuck in the washing machine now. I've actually just got rid of kitchen paper towels and got reusable ones that you chuck in the washing machine. Uh, what else I've done? Toothpaste. I'm just testing out tooth powder rather than having tubes of toothpaste. The, the amount of plastic tubes of toothpaste and plastic toothbrushes that get thrown into the garbage and ultimately into the landfill or into the ocean is horrific. So I've also just testing out bamboo toothbrushes, which are brilliant. Uh, if you want to check any of the reviews for these things, have a look on my blog because I've done reviews for all of them. So slowly but surely, I'm getting rid of things. Shampoo bottles, I use shampoo bars now. Uh, and I use conditioner that comes uh, in a glass bottle that's all made with natural items. Caro's creams, again, reviews on my blog. Absolutely brilliant for shampoo products as well. So I think it is thinking just just thinking about what you're using, not necessarily just what you're eating, but what you're using as well. Um, Giselle loves growing her own veg. Wild garlic is very strong scented, so that should help identify them. Yes, yes. If you see wild garlic and it smells of garlic, you know you're all right. Um, John says, I have loads of ransom this year. Isn't that wild garlic? It is, John. Absolutely nailed it. Ransom is the proper name for wild garlic. Summer says wild garlic pesto. Yum. I've just made wild garlic bread, actually, which is delicious. Uh, Kay says my friend had an amazing veg garden. She used her flower beds with fruit and veg. Yeah, uh, but we always used to. We always used to plant vegetables and fruit in amongst our flowers. And in actual fact, it's called companion planting. Some of the plants are really good for keeping the pests away from the fruit and vegetables. So if you are interested in growing fruit and veg in your garden, it's definitely worth looking at companion planting. Um, it's quite an interesting subject. Uh, Jane, today we've had a gathering of eco warriors. <laughs> yes, and I think that is part of it as well, isn't it? Perhaps that is part of what pagan cooking and eating is, is about being ecologically friendly as well. Absolutely. Um, Sue says, I have tried soap, but find the snotty feel makes me feel sick. <laughs> um, have a <laughs> There are, if you look on Etsy, there are also some pump soaps that are made with natural items. <laughs> um, Leslie says, Plague Doctor Sanitizer is amazing. It is, isn't it, Leslie? It actually smells lovely too. Uh, Jackie says, we've started making our own soaps and shower gel. Not brave enough to make toothpaste. Um, have a look at the tooth. It's tooth powder rather than toothpaste. It actually tastes of cinnamon and clove, the one I've got. It's lovely. Uh, Sue says, we tried, we used tooth powders years ago. My dentist gave me toothpaste tablets. Yes, you can try. I haven't tried those yet, but they look good as well. Uh, John, parsnips, that reminds me, my shallow self only needs pages 146 and 147 of your magical food book, parsnip pasta. Um, <laughs> Uh, I love parsnips. I do love parsnips. I like them better than potatoes, actually. Uh, K, what's that root? Licorice root. That's a natural tooth cleanser. 
Uh, my dad used to buy us licorice root when we were kids. I'm pretty sure it was just to keep us quiet for a while, just like he used to buy us pomegranates and cut them in half and give us a pin to pick out all the seeds. Again, pretty sure it was to keep us quiet. <laughs> Giselle loves the three sisters, corn, beans and pumpkins. Very, very good combination. Jane says, you know, you're doing it right when you can pick up your weekly garbage bag with your little finger. Everything else is either recycled or composted. Yes, it is. It's about thinking about it, isn't it? And making some conscious decisions. Carol says, I haven't made great changes yet, but always conscious of recycling. I think you have to do what works for you. You don't have to wake up one morning and decide that everything's going to change. Even little tiny changes will make a difference in the big pool of things. Just doing one thing will will make a difference. Um, Carol would love to try more natural body stuff and soaps. Have a look at my blog for all the reviews, Carol. There are lots of things on there. Uh, Carla has just bought a greenhouse to try and grow your own food. We'll look at companion planting. Yes, we have a lovely little greenhouse. Um, definitely worth it if you've got the space. But yes, do look at companion planting if you're going to be growing vegetables and fruit in your garden. Uh, Kay says you can get Castile liquid soap and add essential oils. You can indeed to make your own. Uh, Jane, our pond is so tiny it couldn't have gunnery next to it, so it's got rhubarb. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Giselle, is the tooth powder on your blog? I think it went up yesterday or today, Giselle. So, yes, it is on there. I got it from Etsy. If you put tooth powder into Etsy, um, they have lots of options. Jane says, parsnips are great till they get south of your belly button where they turn convert to rocket fuel. <laughs> A lot of things do that if you have um, digestive problems, though, Jane. doesn't have to be parsnips. <laughs> Carol uh i homeschool my youngest what type of simple pagan things can i do with him during home ed nature i think is the very very best way to start a young person on their pagan pathway i don't believe in teaching young children witchcraft as such but i do believe it is very very essential to teach children about nature teach them about all of the plants and the trees and the animals outside and from a cooking point of view teach them about where the vegetables and the fruit and the meat comes from uh, we do this with our son and he's a teenager now but we do it with the veg box if we get something a bit unusual we get we play guess the vegetable <laughs> to see if they know what it is you have to i think teach them about things that grow uh, and making a connection with nature. So that would be my starting point. Uh, Karen has natural material bags to grow vegetables in and a small greenhouse. Excellent. Oh, look, there's a link to the tooth powder review. Thank you to the uh, little elf behind the scenes. Uh, Kay, I only just discovered rhubarb is a vegetable. It is a vegetable. You can add it to savoury dishes. I, it is used generally as a fruit, but it is classed as a vegetable. But then tomatoes are fruits as well, aren't they? So, yeah, I wouldn't. It, yeah, <laughs> it's strange, isn't it, how they're categorised? Uh, Leslie, where did you get your cinnamon and clove tooth powder from? It was from Etsy. But if you have a look at my blog, it's got the link there. Um, it's really good. I'm really impressed with it. Uh, Eric says Astonish is a good budget brand for cleaning products. The wife says they work as good as any. <laughs> now, cleaning products, I've gone eco-friendly on as well. I have switched to Small, S-M-O-L. I get all of my washing tabs for the washing machine, for the laundry from them, and they've just started a range of glass cleaner, general purpose cleaner, and bathroom cleaner. They send you the spray bottles and then they just send you tablets and you drop the tablet in the bottle, fill it up with water, give it a shake and it makes the cleaning product. And it's brilliant. It's totally eco friendly. You reuse the bottle each time. They just send you replacement tablets and it is brilliant. It actually works. The glass cleaner in particular is really, really good. So I can highly recommend small. They do dishwasher tablets as well. Um, so that's if that's your thing. Definitely worth looking at because they're quite, uh, the price is quite friendly too. Karen said when I was little, we used to dip raw rhubarb in sugar and eat it. Yes, so did I. <laughs> uh, Carol says I have seeds to plant with him. Yes, 
Children love planting seeds. Uh, they love crystals too. Yeah, uh, my son loves crystals as well. We're a mixed household here too, Carol. I am the only pagan in my household. Uh, Debbie, didn't know that. I've always looked at them as fruit. Yes, well, we eat rhubarb as a fruit, but technically it's classed as a vegetable. I, you know, <laughs> don't worry about it. Um, Christine uses white vinegar and bicarb for general cleaning. Yep, it's that's really, really good for that. Really good. So I think uh, what's pagan cooking? Being mindful of where your sources come from uh, and being seasonal for me. But I think it is also about making your own decisions. We all need to do our own little bit for the eco part of it. Do as little or as much as you can. Uh, don't break your budget and don't feel guilty if you can't do it either. You know, we have all got restraints. We have to do what we can for each individual person. Um, so that's my point of view, if you like. I um, Everyone's different. Everyone has to work with what works for them. So that's kind of it for this week. It will go up on the blog, obviously. Kay says, love making my only cleaning material from essential oils. Epsom salts and white vinegar, bicarbonate. Yep, makes fabulous fabric softener with white vinegar and oils. And no, the clothes don't stink. No. <laughs> yes, I have. That's supposed to be very good, isn't it? White vinegar in for the... Um, clothes yeah uh tumble dryer sheets as well if you put in a piece of fabric just with a couple of drops of essential oil on does the same thing brilliant in fact i use tumble dryer balls they are knobbly balls <laughs> i'm saying this on the camera uh that you just chuck in the tumble dryer rather than the fabric sheets and they they keep most of the static out of it as well so yeah, it's about thinking outside the box. If you want to see any reviews for any of the eco things, they are all on my blog. Um, but do what you can, basically, and just you know, be mindful. Really, be mindful of seasonal. It's cheaper, it tastes better, and it's eco friendly. And if you're going to eat meat again, be mindful of where it comes from. Um, it's all it's all part of it, really. You've got to do your own little bit, but never be bullied into it, obviously. Um, you are very welcome everybody it's been lovely as always to chat with you guys if you want me to talk about anything in particular in the future just drop me a message and I will do what I can to cover it we have an open online kitchen witch uh, spring equinox ritual I know it's a week late but I was busy last weekend <laughs> busy with the pagan tribal gathering if you look at the pagan tribal gathering Facebook page you will see all the talks from last weekend still there um, but yes, do join us this Sunday, 7pm UK time on the Kitchen Witch Coven Facebook page for the Equinox Ritual, uh, written and run by my lovely Hearth Guardians. Uh, I just rock up and do my bit. <laughs> so join us there if you'd like to. Otherwise, I will see you all again next Friday. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. And thank you so much, as always, for joining me and take care.